All right. We definitely need to look at more examples of solving absolute value inequalities. So in this case, we've got the absolute value of 4x minus 6, and this is supposed to be less than or equal to 6, and we're supposed to find the values of x that make this statement true. So if we're following our pattern that we established in the last video, the first step is to isolate the absolute value, which is already done. Then we're going to split up the inequality. Now, this is less than or equal to. So that's going to mean something in terms of the conjunction we use. That's going to mean we use and. But following the pattern I'm trying to establish, we write down the original just without absolute value bars. 4x minus 6 is less than or equal to 6. Everything stays the same, it's just the absolute value bars are dropped. Then, there's an AND or an OR here, and we'll worry about that in a second. But the next thing I write down, I drop the absolute values, and I'm going to flip the direction of the inequality from less than or equal to to be greater than or equal to. And 6 becomes minus 6. Now, less than and less than or equal to, whenever the inequality is pointing to the left, it's and. Whenever it's pointing to the right, this in this box goes an or. So now, we solve as usual. So we're going to be adding 6 to both sides in both equations. In the first equation, we get 4x is less than or equal to 12. And over here, adding 6 to both sides in the second equation leaves me with 4x is greater than or equal to 0. So now, looks like I should be dividing by 4 x is less than or equal to 12 over 4 is 3. Here, 0 divided by 4, well, 0 divided by any non-zero number is just 0. So, x should be less than or equal to 3, and it should be greater than or equal to 0. Well, that tells me that x is between 0 and 3 and we include these two endpoints. So this is a perfectly acceptable answer, the way you've written it, the way I've written it here. If you would like to write this in interval notation, the left endpoint is 0, the right endpoint is 3, and we're including both. So I put brackets around the left and the right. And that's a perfectly fine way to write the answer, too. Either way you want to write it is fine by me. All right. Now, we've done two ands, one in this video and one from the previous video. Let's do, we need to do a couple ors. So let's look at 48. This looks like a good one. We're solving absolute value of 3x minus 3 being greater than or equal to 15. So once again, step one is already done for us. We're just isolating the absolute value. Now the split is slightly different in this case. We will write down the exact same thing, just without absolute value bars. So 
3x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 15. I got some conjunction, I'm not worried about what it is at the moment. Now, the second inequality, there's no absolute value bars, so it's 3x minus 3. This, the inequality flips, so greater than or equal to becomes less than or equal to, and this 15 gets a negative in front of it. Now what goes in the box? Well, it's not less than or less than or equal to here, it's greater than or equal to. And greater than or greater than or equal to, in other words, the inequality is pointing to the right, what goes in this box is or. So we'll be adding 3 to both sides of both equations to get 3x is greater than or equal to 18. For the second equation, we get 3x is less than or equal to minus 12, I believe. Minus 15 plus 3 minus 12. Dividing 18 by 3 leaves us with 6. And dividing minus 12 by 3 leaves us with minus 4. So what this looks like, x is less than minus 4, less than or equal to minus 4, or x is greater than or equal to 6. What this looks like is the following. x can either be minus 4 or something to the left of minus 4, or x can be 6 or something greater than 6, so something to the right of 6. That's simply because we're saying that the distance between 3x and 3 is greater than or equal to 15. So for a distance to be larger than some number means you've got to be at least this far away, if not further. That's why we're getting two ends pointing outwards rather than with and we see just a closed interval or open interval as it may be. Because with and, with this, we're saying this distance between 4x and 6 is no more than 6. You're at least this close is what this says. When it's greater than or greater than or equal to, it's you're at least this far away. So in interval notation, this interval, the right endpoint is minus 4. The left endpoint of this half is minus infinity. We always put parentheses around infinities, and we're including minus 4 here. Now there's a weird way of writing or in this interval notation. It's u for union. We're taking the union of two intervals. You are either anywhere between minus infinity and minus 4, including minus 4, or you're between 6 and positive infinity, including 6. So, this is a perfectly acceptable answer. But if you wish, you can write your answer in interval notation. All right. We need to do another one like this. So, what we're going to do is we're going to mix up 50 a little bit. 50 isn't exactly what we want, so I'm going to make it 
exactly what we want. In fact, let's just make it greater than absolute value of x plus 5 greater than 3. So I switched the sign of the inequality, got rid of the or equal to, and made the 3 positive. With the negative, it gives you weird results. Um, you have to think a bit more deeply about what these actually mean to deal with the negative. But enough of that. Let's get to solving. So once again, very nicely, the book has already isolated the absolute value. Absolute value, there's stuff inside of it, but on the outside, there's nothing left. It's just absolute value of blah, and that's all there is on the left-hand side. So this is isolated. Step two, got to split this thing up. So, it's greater than, so it's going to be or. It's pointing to the right, so it's an or. So I write down this just without the absolute values. So this is going to look like x plus 5 is greater than 3. We already know this is an or, so go ahead and fill it in now. The second one is going to be look just like this, just like the original, except it's not going to have the absolute values, so it's just x plus 5. The greater than is going to flip around, so it becomes a less than, and the 3 becomes a minus 3. And now, everything's back to normal. We subtract 5 from both sides, so 3 minus 5 is a minus 2, and then minus 3 minus 5, that's a minus 8. So, it's the case that x is less than minus 8, or x is greater than minus 8. Two. That is a perfectly good way to write your answer. In fact, so is this. I'm just writing it this way so I can get, you know, you know minus 8 is smaller than minus 2. So I'm putting the inequality with the smallest number on the left and the inequality with the largest number on the right. That's just so that when I do the number line and the interval notation it's a little bit easier to see what's happening. So x less than 8 means anything less than 8 but we're not including or minus 8 but we're not including minus 8. So everything to the left of minus 8 don't include minus 8. Minus 2 or x could be greater than 2, so minus 2. Don't include minus 2, but take everything to the right of minus 2. So in interval notation, we can go as far left as we want up to minus 8, and since we're not including, we use parentheses. Over here, you can be as far left as minus 2, but not including minus 2, so we use the parentheses. And you can go as far right as you like, so plus infinity. And this is an or, so we do that cup, that union. That's another perfectly good way to write your answer, but it's not necessary. This is perfectly acceptable. All right. I think that should be reasonably good.